In this one we're going to start to have a look at the mechanics of applying the filtering to our data using the promotions. So basically our promotions filter apply method which we see here. So at the moment as you can see all we did was we just hard coded in some values so that we're always returning something when we actually contact this service. And so we can continue uh, working the way we are where we're making requests from Postman and putting data in the database. However, I don't think that would be an efficient way to work. I think the best way to drive this out where we're not having to go and look in databases and look in Postman and other uh, tools is just to write a test and then we can just keep firing the test and just making the changes as we go along. So we're going to take a bit of a test driven approach on this and so let's go over and actually start uh, writing our first test or thinking about what testing tools we need. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. As this is a service, I'm thinking we're probably going to need access to things like uh, the ability to mimic making requests. I think we're probably going to need entity manager interfaces, uh, containers. And so what I'm going to do is set up a uh, like a base test class, which provides all of those things for us should we need them. And so I'll just call it service test case. Okay, and so should we need to uh, mimic making requests into our application? Obviously, we're not going to need to do that for unit testing the filter apply method, but it is something which we might need. And also, uh, I can get I can generate a client off which I can grab a container. So what we'll do is we'll extend web test case, and then in the setup method, I'll obtain a container. But first off, let's just add it here so container interface which is symphony component dependency injection container interface and we'll just call it container so this container equals static create client and then get container and then I'll extend this class for any tests which might need access to a client which I can use to mimic HTTP requests or if I need containers or any other little bits of setup such as entity managers, things like that. Okay, so in tests, now I'm going to create a folder called unit and then we need a lowest price filter test. which extends service test case. In here, I'm going to add a test method called lowest price promotions filtering is applied correctly. And so I'll just go and annotate this as a test. And then, so I'll mark out the three stages of the test. So I'll go with given, when, then. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to work backwards because by working backwards, that'll indicate to me which what setup I need and what actions need to actually be performed and what the dependencies are to perform those actions. But first, if I start with the outcome, then I think it'll help guide me. So let's go over to the lowest price filter and see what kind of things we're expecting here. And so if um, this filter had been applied and the Black Friday sale was the one which generated the lowest price, then we'd expect to see a discounted price uh, of 50, a set price of 100, and a promotion name of Black Friday sale. Not too concerned with checking a promotion ID because uh, that is a value which is generated by adding a record in the database. So we'll not bother with that. What I will do though is I'll just go and copy some of this over here and I'll use that to guide me. And so just behind the scenes, I'm gonna create some little test assertions using these things. So those are the assertions which I've come up with. Uh, this assert same 100 inquiry get price, this assert same 50 inquiry get discounted price, and this assert same Black Friday half price sale inquiry get promotion name. 
And so as you can see, this is already indicating to me what my dependencies are in order to get to this point. I'm actually going to need an inquiry. Where does my inquiry come from? It actually gets returned from the lowest price filter. And this will be the when part of the test. So this is the actual action which is being performed. This is where we're calling the apply method on the lowest price filter. So inquiry equals, I'm gonna need a lowest price filter. And so you probably have spotted that we don't actually have one of those yet. And we're calling an apply method on it. And so what are the arguments? Let's go and check this out. So it's gonna need uh, an inquiry. So the same kind of inquiry object, and then it's going to need an array of promotions. So things are getting quite interesting here. So here we'll say inquiry, and then we're going to need an array of promotions. And if you remember, in order to unpack those, we need our three dots like so. And so we still don't actually have a initial inquiry in order to pass it into this method and we don't have the promotions and we don't have the lowest price filter. Before I create those though, what I think I'll do is I'm gonna make a distinction between the inquiry, even though it's the same object, which comes out of the apply method and the inquiry goes in because now it will have been filtered. So what I'll do is I'll call this filtered inquiry. And then I can change the names of these. Okay, great, so let's work our way through these. We'll go from left to right, I think we should be able to do that. So first off, lowest price filter. Where can I get one of those from? If you remember, uh, when we did our service test case, we have access to the container, and so because it is in the source folder, it means it automatically gets added to the container, I can grab it simply by just passing the name of it. So like this, lowest price filter equals this container get, and then lowest price filter class. And we should now have access to a lowest price filter. Let's actually go and dump this out just to prove that that is working. So vendor bin PHP unit tests unit lowest price filter test, let's run this. And so I'm getting some deprecation notices and I'm getting this message here about the lowest price inquiry JSON serialize method. So we don't actually need the JSON serialize method on the lowest price inquiry anymore. I think what I'll do is I'll just go and remove that. So that was still some hangover when I was showing you how you could uh, serialize objects doing things uh, uh, that way using the um, serializable interface but we decided we're not going to do that we're actually uh, physically serializing our objects using the Symfony serializer so this implements promotion inquiry interface let's follow that and we'll actually remove this where it extends JSON serializable let's go back to our test and run it again and see what it tells us next Okay, so it's just the one deprecation notice and there's a way in which you can get rid of deprecation notices if you don't want to see those when you run your tests. We simply have to go to our uh, PHP unit XML dist file and you just need to drop this line in which I add here. So env name equals symphony underscore deprecations underscore helper and then set the value to disabled. And then now if we go and run the tests so as you can see, we're now getting a app filter, lowest price filter from the container. Okay, great stuff. So we know we have a lowest price filter, that's great. Let's work our way upwards. Next we'll add an inquiry. So inquiry equals new lowest price inquiry. That should take care of that. And then we need some promotions. I'm gonna drop these underneath here. So where are we actually gonna get some promotions from? What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create three new promotion objects and then wrap those in an array. So I'll not add them here because it means that this test method could become uh, quite large and unwieldy and hard to read. What I'll do is I'll create a method underneath this, like a data provider, but 
not an official data provider, but it will give me the option to use it as a data provider later on if I uh, decide to set out that way. So I'll call it this, promotions, data, provider. Okay, and then obviously we need to go and create that. And so if I am later gonna use it as a proper uh, data provider, then it needs to be public. So we'll start out the way we may continue. So public function. This is gonna return an array. And then just behind the scenes, because I'm sure you don't wanna see me type out three entire uh, objects with all the properties, I'll just create three um, promotion objects and then add some properties to them. This is what I've come up with. So the top one should seem quite familiar to you because that's what we created in the database. So the name Black Friday half price sale, the adjustment will be 0.5, i.e. multiply by 0.5. The criteria is that the request date must fall between this range and then the type of modification, the type of filtering is going to be a uh, date range multiplier. Then the next one we said was gonna be a fixed price voucher. And so uh, we're setting it to a fixed price of 100 if the voucher code is OU812. And again, the modification type is fixed price voucher. And just off the top of my head, I've invented a new one here as well. Buy one, get one free. I think I want to take the uh, number of even items and multiply that by 0.5 and then maybe add on um, just a regular price for any odd items or for the single odd item after that. If that makes sense, I'm sure it'll make more sense once we get to figuring this out. And so at the bottom here, what I want to do is just return an array of promotion one, promotion two, and promotion three. Okay, so we now have three promotions. And as you can see, PHP Storm's now happy with us. It's not giving us the squiggly red line. And I think I should be able to run this test now and see how we're getting on. So like I say, very happy path. This is all really just to make sure that we have all our dependencies or most of our dependencies in order to be able to start driving out the functionality any, anyway, at least. So vendor bin PHP unit tests unit lowest price filter test okay and we get one test three assertions why did we get three assertions because in the lowest price filter those are the values which were hard coded so we set the price to 100 the discounted price to 50 and the name to black friday half price sale so if i was to change one of these to 51 we should now get a failure and so we get a failure, failed asserting that 51 is identical to 50. So we'll just go and change that back. Having a test like this, which we can keep running uh, as we're updating the logic in our lowest price filter should serve us quite well. We can just go in, make our little tweaks, run the tests, and we're not going over to use other tools like Postman. We're not having to check databases as we just do little tweaks to our logic. We can run the tests, see if we're still passing and make our changes that way. And I think it should be a nice slick workflow. If you appreciate the value in being able to test your code well, then make sure you check out my course, Testing PHP. It consists of many hours of material, which covers unit testing, feature testing, and integration testing. There's loads of stuff on faking and mocking, how to test code which interacts with external services. There's a long section on test driven development and I'm continuously adding to the course as I uncover new tools and techniques. You'll love it. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.